All right. Um, I'm Sarah Tinsley. I'm the principal of Quorum Deo, and we are celebrating tonight our Fine Arts Night. <clears throat> All right. I have some thoughts, Christmas thoughts, and Quorum Deo parents and students, um, we have talked a lot at the beginning of the year about the Chronicles of Narnia. So, you know, Narnia has got some Christmas stuff. So, Always Winter, Never Christmas is a climate for conversion. You'll remember that the White Witch cast her spell on Narnia and decreed that it must always be winter and never Christmas. And so when the children in The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe first arrive in that amazing place, the fields are covered with snow. But Aslan, the true king, returns to save Narnia from the White Witch. And the spell of the White Witch is broken and the melting begins. Well, C.S. Lewis reveals this change in a scene with the children and those jolly Narnians, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver. And remember that Father Christmas arrives with the sleigh bells jingling, and at once the children and Mr. and Mrs. Beaver are suspect that the White Witch is losing her powers. He was a huge man in a bright red robe, as bright as holly berries, with a hood that had fur inside it and a great white beard that fell like a foamy waterfall over his chest. Now that the children actually stood looking at him, he was so big and so glad and so real that they all became quite still. They felt very glad, but also solemn. I've come at last, said he. She has kept me out for a long time, but I have got in at last. Aslan is on the move. The witch's magic is weakening. And Lucy felt that deep shiver of gladness that you can only feel if you are being solemn and completely still. Father Christmas brought presents for everyone. He even intends to deliver Mrs. Beaver a new sewing machine. And see if you can remember what gifts he gave to the children. For Peter, a shield and sword. For Susan, bow and a quiver of arrows and an ivory horn. When you put this horn to your lips and blow it, said Father Christmas, then wherever you are, some kind of help will come to you. And then for Lucy, a glass bottle of healing cordial and a small dagger. Now, when I was making this list, I obviously was thinking, oh my goodness, what did Edmund get? But Edmund wasn't there. You kids will remember that. From, from his big bag then, Father Christmas brought out a British treat, a large tray with five cups and saucers and cream and sugar and a teapot piping hot. When departing, Father, Father Christmas yells out, and Merry Christmas and long live the true king. What does C.S. Lewis mean to say to us about the winter spell in Narnia and how it ends? The image of snow melting is one way that Lewis describes the last stage of his very own experience of conversion by God. He writes about it in Surprised by Joy. For Lewis, the see it, his conversion was a long, slow process. First, just an acceptance of theism, believing there was a God, and then later a belief and then a complete surrender to Jesus Christ. Lewis uses vivid words and images to describe his inner change of heart. He says, I felt as if I were a man of snow at long last beginning to melt. The melting was starting in my back, drip, 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 and presently a trickle, trickle, trickle. I rather disliked the feeling. And a few pages later, he insists that his conversion was almost without consolation. There was no strain of music from within. There was no smell of eternal orchards at the threshold when I was dragged through the doorway. There was not even really a serious desire in me. I was dragged from God's love. Lewis's figure of snow melting is a good one. It suggests how a person's long coldness of heart, a heart of stone, can be changed. And sometimes it is bit by bit into a warm, living heart for God. Small wonder that Lewis used this figure of snow then, enlarging it into a whole snowy kingdom under the white witch's smell in his Chronicles of Narnia. When the snow of Narnia melts, 
Isn't it just Lewis suggesting how winter in our hearts gives way to the springtime of faith and rebirth? In another passage in Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, he heightens the drama of the snow melting. It's when Edmund, who has been captured by the witch, realizes that her powers are declining. Now they are steadily racing on again, and soon Edmund noticed that the snow which splashed against them as they rushed through it was much wetter than it had been the night before. And all around them, though out of sight, there were streams chattering and bubbling and splashing, and even in the distance, roaring. And his heart gave a great leap, for though he hardly knew why, he knew that frost would soon be all over. Patches of green grass and green tree branches were beginning to appear throughout the forest, and only minutes later he noticed a dozen crocuses growing around the foot of an old tree, gold, purple, and white. Aslan had broken the white witch's power. It is a simple but powerful metaphor. Winter, cold, death, evil, sin, vast and widespread, and then springtime to suggest a personal transformation and redemption. Because his heart, C.S. Lewis's heart, had been cold and then had been warmed by the love of God, he extends this metaphor into the Chronicles of Narnia and the snow melting when Aslan is on the move. So I hope you guys can in, keep in thinking about Narnia throughout the year, but Christmas is an especially great time to do so. We're going to start with the talent show, the talent part of tonight, and so will Joshua Thompson please come. Jolly Old Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas is a familiar tune for young and old alike. Flynn Kosky will now present his version on piano. Chris Rice is a modern hymn writer and Christian performer. His songs have encouraged many people over the last few decades, and now Olivia and Rosie will sing one of his most famous songs, the untitled hymn, also known as Come to Jesus.
appropriate that We Three Kings will be performed by three siblings. We welcome Landon, Caitlin, and Michaela Plummer to the stage now to perform their piano trio.
Now, its melodic sound is a favorite at Christmas time and throughout the year. Now, Vaughn LaPelle will play a soothing song, Walking in the Air. At Christmas, we thank God for sending his son, Jesus, to be our savior. But can we ever be good enough to earn God's favor? Listen carefully as our elementary students share some biblical insight in their skit, good -a meter Welcome to the good -a meter Today we will be measuring you to find out if you are good enough to get into heaven. Please step forward. Usually I was good, but Sometimes I was bad. I went to church on Christmas and Easter. Well, let's have a look. Hmm, I see you're good most of the time, but will that be good enough? Let's find out. So sorry, please step aside and wait right there. Next! My mom went to church. Well, I'm not sure that's good enough, but let's have a look. Hmm, not bad. I see something good in here. Well, let's have a look. Sorry. Please have a sign way over there. Next. I am a very nice person. I'm polite and honest, and I compliment people all the time. Well, that sounds delightful, but let's have a look. Hmm. I see you're honest and kind. 
There's mostly good stuff in here. Let's see what the good meter thinks. So sorry, please step aside and wait right there. Next! I devote my entire life to making the world a better place. I donated blood every month. I helped with an orphanage in Honduras, and I gave money to the poor. Well, I just wish I could have done more. That sounds very impressive, but let's have a look. Hmm, I see you have worked hard to be a really good person. Well, let's see if all your good work was good enough. sign away with the others but I was really good how can I not be good enough please step aside next I have tried to be kind and loving but I know I felt short of God's glory well let's have a look hi <laughs> oh I didn't know he was with you Yes, you step on the good meter in her place. Hey, that's, that's not, that's not fair. fair. That's settle not fair. down, settle down. That's why they call it grace. It is all right here in the Bible. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Music from a favorite Christmas television show has woven its way into our culture and our celebration of Christmas. Jonathan Fisher celebrates this joy found in his piece from a Charlie Brown Christmas medley. Who hasn't heard Baby It's Cold Outside lately? Well, you haven't heard this version. See how close to home this hits as the Smyrnskis entertain with their parody, Baby Go Play Outside. Parents, perhaps you can relate. It's a beautiful day outside. You want your kid to go out and get some sun. Stop getting confused with a vampire. And uh, 
They're playing video games. They're glued to a screen. Right, Natalie? I need to kill the skeletons. Natalie, kids glued to a screen? Yes. Yes. I wonder where they get it from. I got it from you, Dad. That was a rhetorical question. So anyway, about a year ago, uh, we wrote a song about this. And we had a year to perfect it, work on it, make it great, didn't we? Yes, we did. We sure did. But um, we didn't get around to it, did we? No, we did not. Sorry about that. So uh, without further ado... Just wanna play. Baby, go play outside. She won't go away. And take the dog outside. This level has been you your paper so in. very tough. Look at your hands, they look white. Your mother is looking worried. It's Friday, what's the Your math hurry? grades will hit the floor. Listen to that dragon roar. Look at those rabbits Now scurry. I'm starting to worry. Just let me close that dungeon door. Put the leash on while you log on. The neighbors on. are freaks. Maybe it's safe out there. Haven't seen them in weeks. Just get your behind out there. Dad, don't have a cow. You're annoying me I'll now. I'll cast a spell. I'll take the tablet and phone. I'm telling you no more games, Mind girl. if I kill him first. At last your brain is totally fried. I'll go once that Enderman's You really died. can't stay telling you go out, baby, Daddy, go it's play outside. Do I have to go? Baby, go play outside. It's starting to snow. But baby, it's warm outside. The dungeons I've seen. That's lava that you draw At too. least it's warm. Look out the window. There's no the storm. The neighbor guy looks suspicious. Gosh, her lips are malicious. He's always lurking behind his She's door. She's totally lost it for and sure. And his beastly dog is vicious. Seems she'd rather do the well, dishes. Well, maybe just a respawn Ain't seen such obsession before. I have to stay home. Baby, go play out there. I'll freeze to the bone. It's practically spring out there. I've got a mind sand. This is getting out of Why hand. Why can't I see him? The poor dog really has to I'll be. I'll take him for a walk tomorrow. He's looking at you with sorrow. At least he won't be peeing inside. If his bladder burst and he I died. really can't play. I'm telling you, get out, Fine, baby. I'll go, go play, play outside. outside. We sure killed them, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did, Natalie. Oh, no, I was playing. I was killing a bunch of zombies with my friend. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Meredith Andres is an up-and-coming Christian singer-songwriter who has written a creative arrangement of old standards. Chloe Kratz will now sing "He Has Come for Us," combined with "God Rest You Merry Gentlemen." God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior, born on Christmas Day, to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort, joy, comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. He has come for us, the Messiah, born to To certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy to 
We love to hear the old standards at Christmas, and it's even more fun when we hear two good friends playing the piano together. Welcome Jonathan Fisher and Edward Stark as they play the traditional carol, Angels We Have Heard on High. In the Bleak Midwinter is a poem, it was based on a poem by Christina Rossetti. The poem was first published under the title, A Christmas Carol, in January of 1872. The poem first appeared set to music in 1906 with a setting by Gustav Holtz. Rebecca Dell will now share her love of the harp music by playing this lovely melody.
Many have heard the story of how Silent Night was composed. In Austria, in 1818, the organ had gone out and Franz Guber, Gruber was asked to compose a piece on guitar for Christmas Eve. Joseph Moore composed the lyrics and the famous Silent Night was born. The German class, under the direction of Alicia Stark, will now present a carol in its original German. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This promise from Isaiah has been fulfilled in Jesus. Here now to sing a song incorporating this truth is Chloe Marchman, accompanied by Abby Moffat. <laughs>
done a great thing, taken on flesh and conquered death's sting. Shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. Holy is His name. Holy is His The language of love is expressed in many ways, as marriage counselor Jerry Chapman has revealed in his thoughts on the five love languages, physical touch, words of affirmation, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of service. Our high schoolers have come up with a way to poke a little fun with their interpretations of Santa's love languages. Santa should be here any minute. Come on, Chloe. Is Santa even real? You can't doubt Kanan, otherwise you don't get presents. Santa! Santa, did you get the My Little Pony set up I wanted? What about my Xbox? Did you get that? Santa, if you're real, where are all our presents? Well, you see, kids, this year I really wanted to go the extra mile. So I analyzed each of your love languages. Love languages? For example, Chloe, your love language is words of affirmation. So... Oh, let's see. Here is your gift. Your hair is the most beautiful hair within at least a one-mile radius. <laughs> but we're in rural Kansas. There's no one else in a one-mile radius. Rachel, your love language is acts of service. So I donated all of your gifts to charity. Don't you feel a lot better? Technically, yes. Sophie, my girl, your love language is quality time. So... I'm glad we did this. Hey, what about me? Well, Kanan, your love language actually was receiving gifts. So, um, here's a skateboard. And, uh, oh, where is it? A vacation to Italy. Um, uh, how about an iPhone? And... Why don't you take this Xbox? I'm sure she doesn't want it anymore. Kids, what's going on out here? You know you don't want Santa to see you. Shafin Bates, your love language was physical touch. <laughs> You're welcome. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. Merry Christmas! Hey, hey. Hi. So, even though we had fun with the idea of gift giving tonight, at this time of year we take time to remember the greatest gift we were ever given many years ago in Bethlehem when God became a man to show us what love really means. Merry Christmas. We have had a wonderful time tonight sharing in the talents our students have to offer. Now, to bring our talent portion to a close, we present Daniel, Tommy, Justin and Jacob jamming with O Christmas Tree from A Charlie Brown Christmas.